The Battle of Hoth is the first time we see the full might of the Empire's land forces on screen, as they quickly and easily overrun and pulverize the rebels in their defenses. However, most of the battle is shown through the perspective of the main characters. So what was the battle like for the average rebel and imperial soldier? We get to see the battle from a rebel soldier's point of view through the short comic Star Wars Entrenched. It follows a young rebel soldier by the name of Jobin, who has been writing to his mother about his experience within the Rebel Alliance and his time on Hoth. He talks about how the rebellion has changed him, as well as the events leading up to the Imperial attack. Through his recollection, we find out that the other rebel soldiers along with him were afraid of what was coming, afraid of the unknown and the idea of dying. Many of them were young and somewhat inexperienced, with only a few squads containing veteran soldiers from past battles, which helped to boost morale among younger recruits. Prior to the battle, their days mostly consisted of setting up their perimeter defenses and preparing to defend Echo Base at all costs. Once Han Solo had discovered and destroyed an Imperial probe droid, Rebel scouts were sent out to locate possible landing zones. Two scouts were successful in discovering one, but they were quickly killed before being able to send a warning signal to Echo Base. Once the Empire began staging its attack and the Imperial walkers were coming, the rebel soldiers on the ground were confident that they would be able to hold off the attack long enough for the rebel leaders to escape. However, this confidence was quickly shattered once the rebels were killed left and right, eventually discovering how ineffective their weapons were against the armored AT-AT walkers. Though they did have a few quick celebrations whenever they were successful in bringing down a walker, but in the end, they were all either killed or forced to run for their lives once the walkers broke through their defenses. The squad that Jobin was leading quickly dispatched away from the trenches and made their way toward the Ion Cannon. On their way there, they ran into an AT-ST. Although the walker forced them to hide behind cover, they were able to quickly bring it down by throwing a pack of explosives onto it. Once they arrived at the Ion Cannon, they discovered that the rebels there had been eliminated by Imperial snowtroopers. Knowing that without the Ion Cannon, the rebel transports would not make it off the planet, Jobin and his squad ran into the control room and confronted the snowtroopers. One of the rebel soldiers ran to the intercom, sending a transmission to warn the other rebels within the base that Imperial troops had entered the base. He was the guy we hear in the movie yelling the same words before being killed. Jobin, on the other hand, ran to the button to fire the ion cannon, being briefly stopped by a snowtrooper before stabbing his eye out and successfully firing the cannon. After they secured the control room, Jobin and the rest of his men made an attempt to escape by catching a ship in one of the hangars. Unfortunately for them, once they arrived it was too late, witnessing the Millennium Falcon leave right in front of them, with Darth Vader being only a few meters away. Sensing their presence, Vader ordered his men to kill the remaining rebels. Retreating from Vader's men, Jobin and the other two rebel soldiers made a desperate attempt at finding another ship within a different hangar. When they reached this other hangar, they discovered another ship waiting for them, but before Jobin could make it, he was shot down. Accepting the fact that he wasn't going to make it, he threw his message to his friend, who told him to give it to his mother. After the ship escaped, the badly injured Jobin was force choked by Vader, who demanded the rebel to reveal information. He refused, spitting at the Sith Lord's helmet, which resulted in his quick death as he was crushed. On the other side of the battlefield, we don't get too much information on how the Imperial soldiers felt aside from a few conversations and recollections. From the journal of a 501st trooper, he stated how he and the other stormtroopers were exhilarated over the fact of finally crushing down on the rebellion. Their blood ran hot with dreams of victory, so much so that they didn't even feel the cold. The journal continued to state that after the battle was finished, the soldiers of the 501st had gathered around the burning rebel bunker and cheered over their victory, believing that the rebellion was finished and that they had finally won the war. To them, this was one of their proudest moments, as not only did they swiftly crush the Empire's number one enemy, but they also killed those who had destroyed the Death Star, the same battle station that contained many of their friends that they had fought with for decades prior. For them, this victory was personal, and they felt they had avenged their fallen comrades with this triumph. Thanks for watching this video. Be sure to subscribe for more videos like this one. And as always, may the Force be with you.